boy then went home without his glasses on. And his father saw him and he said, Hector, put your glasses on. And Hector goes, Papa, I don't need them. Jesus healed me. Got out the Bible and started reading the Bible to his father. Guess what happened? The father came to church on Sunday. Well, the whole family came to church. This is Touched by Heaven, everyday encounters with God. Because God is speaking to you and me and the church and the world. And in these episodes, we get to listen in on the conversations, in these encounters with angels, divine intervention, prophetic dreams, visions, near-death experiences, and today, miraculous healings. Would you agree that that is one area that perhaps we have a little doubt in our prayer that when I pray, something might actually happen, that I might actually move the hand of God? Perhaps there's a little bit of doubt going on? So I was recently re-listening to episode 157, got John and Nancy, and they pray with no doubt. And amazing things happen. We need to revisit this, this mindset on how to pray for miracles and actually expect something to happen. Because 2,000 years ago, the church was exploding with new Christians. Why? Because the miraculous was getting everyone's attention. Jesus prayed, something happened. The apostles prayed, something happened. Well, it's still happening today, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. God is still God. The great I am, not the great I was. A little more skeptical world out there, have you noticed? <laughs> you know, And still there are disciples of Christ praying, knowing that prayer moves the hand of God. Today we have John and Nancy with us living near Joplin, Missouri, but uh, they were out of the country for quite a while, evangelizing, uh, starting up some churches, and uh, seeing a lot of miraculous things down in Panama, Bolivia, and other places, and and uh, today they share their stories with us, and when you hear it, maybe you're, you, you might be tested. You, you might be tested in your, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Prayer, moving the hand of God. Jesus just healed me here on Touched by Heaven. Everyday Encounters with God. Well, uh, my wife and I have uh, been doing prayer ministry for almost 18 years. We just returned to the United States about a year and four months ago. We were in Panama, the country of Panama, for 10 years. God's hand worked miracles down there. Uh, we went down with one idea. And uh, of course, when you tell God your idea, he laughs and he says, no, I got a better plan. <laughs> and he came through. <laughs> oh, we bought land and built a house. Two weeks after the house was finished, uh, a missionary friend of ours visited us and we started Bible studies in Spanish with Panamanians. And over a period of six and a half years, uh, the Bible study grew into a church. And since that time, there have been at least six more churches established, home churches, and a prison ministry. And uh, there are well over 200 prayer warriors down there, Panamanians who pray, and miracles are seen all the time. Yeah. Okay, let's tell, tell stories then. What, what did you see here? What, talk about it. I guess it was like August, September of 2014. I started listening to Curry Blake and Dominion Life Church on uh, on YouTube, and he teaches a a divine healing technician course, and I started believing everything you know every every word in the Bible and everything that Jesus says exactly as it is in the Bible, and I had lost my thyroid to cancer in 1994. And so I contacted one of his trainees up in up in uh, Colorado Springs, and I just emailed her. So she emailed back to me. We never even spoke. I declare a new thyroid be created in Nancy. Thyroid, you will behave the way you should. Everything will function properly. It will be this way and no other, in Jesus' name. So when I got on in the morning... I read that out loud, and I said, I agree in the name of Jesus Christ, and poof, I had a new thyroid. And I don't know how much you know about thyroid. A lot of people don't, but that's like your master gland, and without that, you can't really live unless you supplement with a thyroid hormone. So I'd been on that hormone for 20 years. I could kind of feel something was different, 
and I stopped taking my medication and, and it's been six and a half years. I've been functioning without it. No effects. No, no bad effects. No, right. no bad effects. Now, now I hear something in your speech. Sinus. <laughs> it's just <laughs> sinus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everything is blooming here in Missouri and Kansas <laughs> are probably two of the worst states. You're a little stuffed up. Is that what I'm hearing? You're just stuffed up. Yeah. 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 Okay. Now it has been proven. She's had a uh, blood test done. And the blood test shows T3 and T4 in her blood system. Thyroid hormones. And those are thyroid hormones, which she would not have. So was your thyroid taken out? Yes, it was completely removed. And then they gave me um, 105 millicuries of radiation. So it would never grow back. So you're producing a hormone that's impossible to produce without a thyroid. Exactly. That's pretty good. That's pretty good, Nancy. That's pretty. I just got chills, but only on the right side of my body. It's working. It's working its way around, but you know. <laughs> your thyroid is kind of like right under the Adam's apple. That was October 2014. Wow, that's an awesome miracle. That's an awesome miracle. It is, and we've seen so many. Um, the one that really sticks out was a four-year-old girl. We were having church on the back patio and the mother had gotten up and walked around. We had a sink in the back and she was running cold water and putting it over her baby's head. And then all of a sudden she starts screaming. The mother. The mother. She's going, she's dead. She's dead. And our pastor is a police officer. And he came over and looked at the baby, looked in her eyes, looked at her face. And he said, church, this baby is dead. Start praying. So they started praying. I know that the prayer lasted well over 10 minutes. Yeah. And I was holding the baby. I felt like there was something in her that shouldn't be. I thought maybe she choked on a lozenge or, you know, something. So I was holding her in front of me. Um, face down. And I just started talking to her spirit and said, Yvonne, come back here right now in the name of Jesus Christ. You come back here. Today's not your day to die. You will live and not die. You will live and not die. By Jesus' stripes, you are healed. In Jesus' name, you're healed. And I just kept saying that over and over and over again. And I could not feel a pulse. Usually you could, you could feel a pulse in the belly. There was no pulse, no pulse, no pulse. And uh, there's another lady helping to hold her. And she was, you know, kept shaking her head, nothing, nothing, nothing. And then after about 10 minutes, I could kind of, it's hard to explain, but I could kind of feel her spirit flutter back. And um, then I felt this strong pulse. And then I said, whatever's in her that's not supposed to be, come out of there right now. <laughs> it came out both ends. <laughs> well, what a nice surprise. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I said, okay, her mom, here's your baby. Yeah. Take her quick. Yeah. So what do we think it was? What what do you what do you think? Well, they took her to a doctor. Her mother then let us know that she'd been sick for over a month. Running a really, really high fever. The hospital checked her out. The fever had broken, was gone down. And they could not find anything wrong. The next morning, she took her to a regular doctor. He checked the baby out and he goes, well, what that is, what she described was amoeba poisoning, which kills a lot of children in Panama because they drink from the, the, the streams. Yeah. I was going to say it's from the water, right? Yeah. 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 And the water down there is not the best. But the doctor says, I've just run the amoeba test on her and the results are negative. But everything you've told me, that was amoeba poisoning that she had. So within a 24 hour period of being tested, there was not one amoeba in her body. Wow. So and uh, <laughs> this is... she's now, I think she's nine or 10 years old now. 
you know, this would be a good time to go. Let's let's talk about you guys. Let's talk about your upbringing, what you believe, uh, when you started believing this way, that kind of thing. Um, okay. Uh, it's John, you start, and then we'll work to Nancy here. But uh, what's your background? Okay. Um, I was raised in the Methodist Church. I moved away from God. I went in the military, but uh, I made some wrong choices, and my life fell apart. At the lowest point of my life, I just called out to Jesus because I knew him, but I didn't have a close, close relationship with him. So uh, it was April 18th, April 17th, 24 years ago. I lost my job. I couldn't find anything. I was in computers. And I said, Jesus, I, I made a mess of my life. And now it's it's time I let you be in control and I'm going to follow you. And uh, after I said, Jesus, you're in charge. Two weeks later, I had three job interviews on the same day. And what happened? What happened is I had three job offers that day. God opened doors. And yeah. Yeah. that then leads into um, I was a mess at the time still going through separation anxieties and, but God led me to Nancy through a church program up there. And it took her a good three months to break through the walls. Way to go, Nance. Just keep (laughs) hitting that brick wall. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It was, it was several bricks thick too. She saw uh, something in there. She saw, what'd you see in there, Nance? What he could be? Um, yeah, a, a gentle, kind man. Um, he wasn't real strong Christian right then, but um, I just saw a really gentle, kind man who would be a Christian. I had twenty items like to make up the imp- impossible man. Uh, including how tall he should be, what his hair color should look like. He should be retired Navy or retired military. He should like to cook and, you know, all these things. Like, yeah, you know, if somebody like that shows up, I'll know he's from God. Otherwise, I don't want him because I'm done. The only place I failed was on the list was I was not younger than her. (laughs) Oh, she wanted somebody younger to keep up with her. That was the deal. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but... But I'm only seven months. seven months older than her. <laughs> uh, you'll do then. You'll do. I think we've been dating about three or four weeks. He says, well, I guess we should just get married, huh? <laughs> and um, I said, well, okay, but I want a six-month engagement first. So we did. So you got married six months later after that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's pretty fast. That's pretty fast. <laughs> it's been 22 years. I guess it was about... Two years after we'd been married, we were invited to go listen to a missionary who uh, traveled the world and did a prayer ministry. You could just tell when somebody has a close relationship with God. He was different than any other evangelist I've ever seen uh, praying for somebody. I mean, he didn't walk up. He didn't scream, rant and rave or slap you in the forehead expecting you to fall down. His voice was just a normal voice. And when he he commanded stuff, he commanded stuff with authority. Well, he looked at me and he says, I need to pray for you. I told him, well, I'm like Paul. You know, I know I have pain. I'll have it for the rest of my life. I'm here for my wife. He told me to shut up and that God had told him that he had to pray for me. Um, his, um, uh, Polish name is Levi Land, L-A-N-D. Well, that night, sorry, that night after eight years of severe pain, I left that place without the severe pain. I exist now without any drugs. I do not have to wear a back brace and I no longer walk with a cane. Let's pause right about here. Then more with John and Nancy here on Touched by Heaven. Quick Patreon shout out. Thank you, Amy. Amy M. For being a part of our Patreon family. 
you know, as I was re-listening to this episode, then it was one fifty-seven, and I heard me talking about. Um, well, I'll just I'll just play this. This is what was going on about three years ago in my mind. I was um, I'll say lamenting to my wife. You shouldn't lament near a wife. You might have to duck. Anyway, I was lamenting to Elizabeth that in the last eight years, um, when podcasting began, I just feel like I should have accomplished more in the last eight years. And she just she kind of went, are you kidding me right now? Are you kidding me right now? And then she opens up this book that I'm a huge fan of. Uh, it's called Immortal Combat. It's written by uh, Father Dwight Longenecker. And towards the back, he starts, he goes to a place where he talks about um, small. He says, look, he said, everything within God starts small. Everything. I mean, you look at Jesus. Jesus wasn't small, but he was just one guy. And then he's got these 12 guys. And look what's happened from those guys, 12 guys. They had no power. They didn't come from royalty. There was no money. There was no nothing. If anything should have just died on the vine, that this was it. And it didn't. But Father Longenecker pointing out that everything starts small. Everything within God starts small. And it's, it really is just putting one foot in front of the other and just putting one stone on top of another. There are no overnight successes in the world of God. There just aren't. And that everything takes time. <laughs> and, and Elizabeth's just pointing out all the fruit that has come from, from the podcast. So I, uh, I thank you for listening as we slowly build and slowly build and we, and we build uh, in large part because of, of those of you who support us through Patreon. And we, I just, this is my way of saying, I, I, we don't care how, how small the support is. We, whatever the number is that's right for you is right for us. So I thank you for that, um, for, for the support. And you can support us through episode here, 157. Click through to Patreon or go to patreon.com and search for Trapper Jack. Uh, so, so thank you. All right, let's get back to uh, part two here with John and Nancy and Jesus Just Healed Me on Touched by Heaven, Everyday Encounters with God. Should we shift over to Nancy a little bit here? As far as your upbringing, Nance, what's uh, okay, okay if I call you Nance? <laughs> All Nancys are Nances to me, so Nance. Yeah, Nance is fine. <laughs> yeah, uh, your upbringing. Um, I was brought up Catholic. I had to go to Catholic school and Catholic church. I didn't believe what they said, and so I just told God, "Yeah, you know, I don't know who you are, but you stay over there. I'll stay over here." Um, live my own life. And so I did whatever I wanted to do for the next 18 years because that's if I'm going to hell, I might as well have some fun while I'm here. And I started having these dreams from Jesus. And he said, I want you. Well, I just really hit the lowest point of my life. And I was in the car and I just said, God, I don't know who you are, but I don't want this stinking life anymore. I don't want to live it. I don't want to be in charge of it. I don't want to make decisions. Everything I do is wrong. It hurts other people. It hurts me. You just take my life and do whatever you want to do with it. You know, everything has been good since then. It's been, you know, a huge process. I just, I just kept saying, God, I want to know who you are because I don't know who you are. I don't love you. I know I'm supposed to, but I, I don't love other people because I don't love myself. And um, I want to love you, but I don't know how. And so within that first year, I got cancer, which was not from God. And that was from the devil. But God allowed it. And I spent most of that year in bed suffering with the cancer. And God gave me the desire to read the Bible. And I'd never read the Bible because I always had trouble with my eyes and some dyslexia and that stuff. But I thought, well, as long as I'm laying here doing nothing, I'll read the Bible. And I did. I just opened it to page one. And I read all the way through. And then by then, I knew the heart of God. And so that was a big turning point, was, was reading cover to cover and finding out who God is and what he expects from us and what he did for us with his son. And um, that started the whole love affair. You know, you said something so, so brutally honest, and it's brutally honest of a lot of people who are church-going people. 
you said uh, God or Jesus, whoever you're talking to, I don't love you. There are a lot of people going to church who don't love Jesus. Yeah. I was one of them. I was one of them. And so you go and you're trying to be the good person, maybe, that you're trying to be the good person, and you're trying to get to heaven and you ask God for things, but there's no relationship. It's not like, I, I don't, you know, you don't love, that. there are so many Christians who don't love Jesus. Exactly. I mean, when you said that, it just hit me between the eyes that that is, that is a truth. Because if we did, we would obey his commandments. Exactly. You want to, you want to please him and, uh, because you love him. You know, Jesus said, uh, I know you talking to the apostles. I know you love me because you, you keep my commandments. That's it. Right. That's right. it right there. No, God's first in my life is just that on Sunday, I have these other 23 things to do. <laughs> And, yeah. <laughs> and I have something more important to begin my day with and end my day with. I'm, I'm not judging anybody. Honestly, gosh, I'm not judging. I'm talking about me and that when you, you realize when you actually, that you actually love Jesus, when you begin your day saying hi to him, you end your day saying hi to him, his opinion matters more than mine because mine doesn't matter one iota. Uh, that's all these little <laughs> things that say, I can tell I love Jesus because of this. And if you're not doing that, it should be a warning sign. Yeah, and I don't I don't necessarily start my day with prayer. I'm like, you know, thank you, Lord, I got up this morning and I don't hurt too bad. And, you <laughs> yeah, know, but this is the yeah, I'm sixty six years old, so I gotta move around before yeah. I quit hurting. But I just I just commune with him all day. It's like it's like he's sitting beside me, he's walking beside me, I'm talking to him and saying, Lord, what a beautiful day you put out there. Look at that sun shining and and um, Lord, help me be kind to this person that's coming in. And and like when I either either have a you know go to church and have to be with people or an extra neighbor or a coworker or whatever, and they're really really annoying. And maybe they're hypocrites, maybe they're liars, thieves, whatever. But you have to be in contact with them. I say, Lord, show me something about this person that you love so I can feel different towards them. Now and this, he always does. I go to bed at night and say, thank you, Lord, for this roof over our head that it doesn't leak, that I have a comfortable bed and clean covers. And I just talk to him all day long. Yeah, and I love, I mentioned it, I think it was on the last episode, I mentioned how there's that, um, is it a Bible? I think it's a Bible verse. Um uh, I believe, but Lord, help me with my unbelief. Yeah, yes. that was a man that that who's I think it was his son needed healing, and he said that to Jesus. Yeah, and that's I think that's where most of us are. You know, we we do we increase our level of no doubt, we increase our faith. It becomes a knowing, but you know, there's always always that uh, you know I believe, but help my unbelief. Yeah, and yeah. and the belief needs to be in. Um, that it's not like I can heal this person. It's that Jesus said, by my stripes, you are healed. I have to believe his word totally and completely. Yeah. I have to believe that he took, when he was at, at the whipping post, he said he took all our illnesses and infirmities. And, and that was for everybody, whether they're saved or not. And that was for everybody all time every disease, every infirmity. And he didn't say, except for this condition or that condition or Joe or whatever. And so we, as the prayers, have to believe Jesus's word without a doubt. Lord, you said this, you never lie, you never change. And I believe it. And I believe it is coming to pass. And then the other part of it is he told us speak to the mountain and tell it what to do. And the mountain is whatever the problem is. So we have to speak out loud. Um, you know, eyes be healed. Jesus says by his stripes, you are healed. Eyes be healed right now or thyroid be created right now because Jesus said that I believe it. I want to tell you from, um, a miracle. I've gone down to Bolivia four times with a couple girlfriends. And and we usually do like a um children's Bible study for a week, opening up a new church or whatever. So we were down there a couple of years ago 
And first of all, we teach kids about the Father's love, how much He how much He loves us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And you know, we get them to invite Jesus into their heart. And then we teach them about forgiveness because that is so huge. Oh my gosh, it is that's bigger than about anything. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, then absolutely. um so anyway, we're talking about healing then. And these kids were between five and 13 years old. So we said, okay, let's practice. And uh, we said, anybody who, who asked Jesus into their heart has the Holy Spirit now. And you can do the same things we do because it's really the Holy Spirit using your hands and your feet and your mouth. And then the Holy Spirit says to me, and ask who wants their vision. Okay. Um, who here needs vi their vision? And little boy raised his hand. His name is Hector, and he's eight years old. And he came up front. Hector couldn't read the poster on the wall. He couldn't. He couldn't read the Bible in front of him. He had very thick lensed glasses. Yeah, the Coke bottle type. So then I said, "Who wants to give uh, Hector's vision?" A five-year-old. Raises her hand. She says, I'll do it. <laughs> and my girlfriend says, oh, my gosh, what are we going to do? I said, well, we told them, you know, if they have the Holy Spirit, they can do exactly what we do. So she came up, and I told her the same thing. You know, by Jesus' stripes, you are healed. Eyes you will see perfectly. Thank you, Jesus. So she did. And we said, Hector, can you read the poster? And he read it. Without his glasses. Yeah. And he said, can you read this Bible page? And he read it without his glasses. And so um, my girlfriend asked her, she says, what's your name? And she says, Periquita, which means little parrot. <laughs> and and um, she says, well, do they call you anything else? And she says, well, sometimes they call me Michelle. So this little girl barely knew her name, but she spoke Jesus' words and believed that he was going to do what he said he did. And this boy went from being legally blind to seeing perfectly. What was that like for you watching that? It was amazing. I mean, and then I'll tell you a following story. Well, don't the go past, away from that one yet. Don't go away from that one yet. I think that's just oh, so. Well, that's it, not the end of the story. I just, yeah, I just want to interject here that uh, you have to look at that purity of heart in that five year old. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, that purity of intention. Oh, yeah. I love to have kids pray. That's gorgeous. But that's gorgeous. The boy then went home without his glasses on. And his father saw him and he said, Hector, put your glasses on. And Hector goes, Papa, I don't need them. Jesus healed me. Got out the Bible and started reading the Bible to his father. Guess what happened? The father came to church on Sunday. Well, the whole family came to church and accepted the Lord. Wow. Did they tell the story? I don't know. We weren't there that Saturday. We had to yeah. move on by then. I see. I think that's one of the great mistakes of, of uh, my church, any church, most churches, that kind of thing happens, and you need to be front and center saying, here's what God did. Well, yes, the you, pastor you, need, you need church, to testify. I'm sure. We need to know. <laughs> People need to know that everything they read about in the Bible is still happening today. More. There's 7 billion people on this planet, even more so. Yeah, I think it's it's important to testify to these things. Amen. That's what well, that's what the podcast is about. Touch by Heaven is about is just to say he's still here. He's still sending his angels. He's still healing people. He's still the divine interventions are still happening. All this is still happening. Nothing new. I am the great I am, as he was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Okay, let me tell you a follow on to that. Then, when that happened, the pastor of the church was standing in the doorway, and he knew. Hector, and he knew his story. So he watched this happen. Well, then he went and started going to the hospitals to pray for people. And there was a woman there that was crying because she had two toes that were completely black and dead from gangrene and from diabetes. And they were going to remove the toes the next morning. So the pastor who already believed in miracles, but I mean, this really strengthened his faith. 
He prayed for her to get new toes. The next morning, and I have pictures of this one. The next morning, she woke up with two brand new toes and the black ones hanging off the end. And all they did was break the black ones off and she was healed. <laughs> and we, like we said, we do, we have pictures of that. Which part of it? Which part of that do you have? The, the new toes with the black one hanging off the end. You have pictures. Uh, Crazy stuff. Uh, yeah. Is this now, why that was Bolivia or Panama? Yeah, that was Bolivia. Okay. Uh, is there something about Bolivia? Is there something about Panama? Is there something about America? Is there something about, I mean, you have had the opportunity of feeling the spirit of countries and they're very different, aren't they? Yes. Yes. Well, we were sent to Panama. Because, uh, as we said, you know, certain times you feel led by God. So about two years ago, God said to me, you have completed the work that I sent you here for. Now I want you back in the States, specifically in the Midwest. And it was funny because he was working on me, too, because uh, there was a two-week stretch there where three o'clock every morning I woke up. And God said, go in the living room and pray and just do some research. And and when she came out after that two weeks and she said, God's telling me we're going to move. And I look at her and I said, I know. And we both cried because we really enjoyed it there. Yeah. But you're willing to go wherever God wants you to go. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, we had mighty works to do up here. And so he kind of directed us up towards Joplin, Carl Junction to be specific. Signed the papers on the house. So exactly one week later, an F3 tornado came through, which was exactly eight years after the big one in 2011. And it came in and threw and jumped over our house and then kept on going. It jumped over, you say? Yeah. Yeah. We only had uh, some roof damage. but From, people- from the debris. You were, you were saying, you know, that people are hearing stories more and more. Well, last September, uh, when I was working at Water Gardens, uh, I helped in the teardown section where they recycle. A piece of plastic, hard plastic, had fallen on the floor. I didn't know. I turned around and stepped on that piece of plastic. It was like stepping on ice. My right leg shot out one way, my left leg buckled underneath me, and I landed hard and drove my vertebrae out of place. Now, I turned around, and there was a person behind me, and I looked at them for help, and they turned their back on me. So here I am. I know I'm hurt. And I go, God, I need your help now. I stood up and walked over 75 foot into the store area to my wife and I made it to the, the counter yeah. and I collapsed on the counter and I told her, I need help now. I need a doctor to get the vertebrae in place. But the thing was, how did I stand up off the floor when I have issues getting up off the floor <laughs> and yeah. walking that 75 foot to get over to the store the next day? We were talking to a couple who were in the recycle area, the teardown area. And the lady looked at me and she goes, are you okay now? And I'm like, well, I'm in pain still. It's because of the damage. It'll take a couple of days for the information to go down. And she goes, yeah, I saw you fall. And I was going to come over and help get up. But she said, There was a person there beside you that lifted you up off the floor and then went with you out of the door into the store. And I'm like, there was nobody with me. And then it just like, you know, God sort of opens a revelation to you. God answered my cry. But she didn't know who it was. No. no, she didn't know who it was, but they were tall. And she said, they lifted me up and walked with me. God sent me an angel that day. Yeah. 
because that's there is no other explanation. I know there was nobody there with me, but yet I got up off that floor as easy if I'd have been a youngster. It was like I was a feather. And then there was no pressure on my back as I walked. Then he dumps you on the counter and leaves. <laughs> <laughs> well, he didn't dump me. He, But he got me to the point where I know I had prayer support. Yeah. Wow, that's great. That's great. <laughs> I love that. Well, I saw the guy picking you up. So, uh, you know. Wow. Yeah. And the, the lady then goes, and she goes, I saw an angel. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, we're gonna we're gonna close it out here. Uh, Nancy, uh, you go first here. Um, what's the message? What's the takeaway in all of this? Takeaway is listen to God, read your Bible, know His Word, and believe it. And what He says is true. He never lies. He never changes. Um, we can believe everything, and we should as believers. We should be out there preaching the word, healing the sick, casting out demons, and raising the dead. And do it. Just don't don't be afraid. Just do it. He says people will do greater things than he did. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. What about it, John? Well, men have a problem with pride. And pride is what our downfall is. And God said, Who's Lord? Me or you? I've forgiven you. You have to forgive yourself. And others. And others. And a lot of time our pride gets in the way that we don't forgive ourselves for things that we've done in our past. But since that day that I got the message about that, I've got a lovely wife that tells me anytime my pride starts showing up. <laughs> But the thing is, I know that my God is the same God that he was in the Bible, that he loves us so much that he gave his life for us. And the thought of what Jesus went through on that whipping post, just imagine all the pain that you've suffered in your life. Then add a second person's pain on top of that. And that add a third person's pain on top of that. Can you imagine what Jesus Christ went through for us? For billions of people. From everyone from the beginning of time. He suffered for us. He loves us so much. And that just come to Christ. He's there with his arms open. He's waiting for you. It's there for the taking. Amen. That's a great way to end it. That is a great way to end it. Thank you so much, guys. This was awesome. And uh, thanks to Brian Phillips for directing us uh, together for this episode. You had your thyroid taken out and there's no way and suddenly kaboom. It's like it's still in there. You know? And there's just no explanation. And non-believers and atheists want to put it on a shelf because they can't understand it. They just, it's inexplicable and unexplainable and therefore we're just going to put it on a shelf. And the answer to that is no, you can't, you're not allowed. <laughs> you're not right. allowed to put that on the shelf. There's an answer for that. So that's the beautiful mercy of God is that he will do anything to help us wake up. Exactly. You know, so, so thanks for the wake up call guys. This has been awesome. Okay. Well, thank you <laughs> thank very you. much. Trevor. Thanks for the time. Thanks John and Nancy. Jesus just healed me. And what happens when we talk about it? What happens when we don't keep these things secret? The church explodes like it did 2,000 years ago. A father who sees his eight-year-old son suddenly able to see and read the Bible starts reading the Bible himself, starts going to church. It's not the miracle. Again, we always we say this. It's not the miracle. It's what it, That's just the flare gun getting our attention. That's what tells you who God is. That's what drives you into Scripture. That's what allows you, opens the door to getting to know God better and our relationship. That's what the miracle does. And that's why we should talk about the miraculous. That's why there's a touch by heaven. You know, it's just, it's, it's so cool to share these stories. Thank you for sharing them. So what's your story? Get a hold of me at touchedbyheaven.net. And thanks for your Patreon support. Click through here at episode 313 or go straight to patreon.com and search for Tramper Jack. All right, see you next week here on Touched by Heaven. Everyday Encounters with God. 
I'm Trapper Jack. I don't know who you are, but you stay over there. I'll stay over here. 